to begin thinking about the causal structure of space-time, we're going to think about space-time intervals. And recall that the space-time interval is given by the metric equation, and we've been using this formula for quite a few units, um, and really this is the, the basic equation that from, from which all the other relativity results have, have followed. And that's not surprising because this tells us how to measure distances in um, space-time. It tells us what the geometry of space-time is. And then from that geometry, lots of results follow. All right, so what do I mean by types of space-time intervals? I mean, there's just one formula for it. What do I mean by different types? Well, for just a moment, let's go back and think about space and not space-time. Maybe I'll use a different color for that. Use this for a while. So the distance squared is the x difference squared plus the y difference squared. So this formula, Pythagoras again. And the thing to note is that this is always greater than zero. Oh, well, it could be equal to zero. But that's kind of a boring case. The only way this can be equal to zero is if, if the two points are the same. Again, remember, this formula gives us the distance between two points, and this is the x separation, and this is the y separation between those two points. And if the distance between two points is zero, the only way that can be true is if those two points are the same point. So this can be, uh, this is positive. The only way it's equal is this boring case where they're only, uh, where the two points are the same. All right, let's go back to think about thinking about the metric equation. Suppose t and x are equal, 3 seconds and 3 seconds. Um, so what that would mean is that there are two events in space-time, and they're separated by 3 units in the x direction, 3 units in the t direction. They're not the same event, but the delta s squared between them uh, is 0. So we can have a non-boring zero here. And we've seen lots of examples of positive space-time intervals. But um, we could also have a negative on the right-hand side of this equation. So if x is greater than t, so maybe x is 2 and t is 1, perfectly legitimate to talk about the space-time interval between those two events, an x of 2, a t of 1, that's going to give a negative value for this. Right, this would be like 1 squared minus 4 squared, negative. So um, when I refer to these types of space-time intervals, um, I'm really, what that corresponds to is the sine, S-I-G-N, plus minus or negative of the space-time interval. So there are three cases to consider. And let me write that out, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So there are three types of space-time intervals, and they correspond to whether or not the space-time interval or the squared space-time interval is positive, zero, or negative. And these three cases go by these three names. If uh, delta s squared is positive, we say that the space-time interval is time-like. If it's zero, we say it's light-like. And if it's negative, we say that it's space-like. Um, and traditionally, these are written as all one word. Um, so you might think there should be a hyphen here, but there's not in physics. I'm not certain of the origin of this. I'm pretty sure it's from um, a 1908 lecture by Hermann Minkowski, um, who's German, and Germans like compound words like this. Um, I'm not 100% sure of that. But we'll revisit Minkowski um, in the last unit of the course. In any event, three different types of space-time intervals. Time-like intervals are actually what we've been working with all along. So in the next video, because it's familiar, I'm going to start here and say a little bit about time-like intervals. Like, what's time-like about this interval? Why that name? Then we will um, talk about space-like intervals, which is a, a new thing. We haven't thought about space-like intervals in terms of the metric equation before, so we'll need to unpack um, some results and see why this is called 